What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Lesser Athletes video. Today, it's your boy Guido on the mic, and today I am going to predict which eight Eastern Conference teams are going to make the 2025 NBA playoffs. We are still in the middle of the offseason, and yes, this this will be part two of this these predictions of for each conference. I'm going to separate them, but without further ado, let's dive right into this. Let's get right into the eight teams. At number one. It's, I think everyone's going to know this. I have the Boston Celtics. <sighs> Man. As a Heat fan, this hurts. They they are the best team in the league, and they maintained everybody. They didn't lose a single piece. Just insane to say. Brad Stevens, you, you might be getting there for one of the greatest GMs of all time, if I'm being honest. I think all, he deserves all the credit. <laughs> Brad Stevens is just insane. Um... But keeping your core together is it's such a big accomplishment, in my opinion. That is something to celebrate. They are the reigning defending champions, and I think no one, no, I don't think anyone's gonna be, no one's gonna win more games than the Celtics. Now I could see the Celtics losing more games than last season because of Porzingis. Um, he had surgery on his knee. That's pretty concerning, or on his leg. That's pretty concerning. He's gonna miss a good chunk of the start of the season. I think around like a month or two. That could lose you some games. That could that might um. That hole at the at the front court might cost you a few games, but regardless, I might I can still see the Celtics being number one. I don't really see another team being above them, but let's go, let's get to the rest of the East now. <laughs> let's get into the rest of the East, the more interesting part. Um, at number two, I'm gonna have the New York Knicks. Now, man, the Knicks, they are there. They look tough. They look really good. That is all I can really say. <laughs> they added Mikhail Bridges. They. They did lose Isaiah Hardenstein, but adding Mikal, pretty big upgrade. And Mitchell Robinson now gets a chance to start fully. Your starting five is probably going to be like what? Like Brunson, Mikal, OG, Randall, and Robinson. That's a really good starting five. And off the bench, you have Josh Hart, DiVincenzo, Miles McBride. Really good all around team. Like, I, if I'm an X fan, if I was an X fan, I'd be pretty happy with the team. I can see them being number two. They have a lot of talent, and if they're all healthy, I could see them making it all the way to being a really big threat to the Celtics. I think I think Knicks have a really good chance of making the finals this upcoming year. And number three, I'm gonna have the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, Philly, I think by far had the best offseason in the entire NBA. That's just not even an exaggeration. They they definitely did. Like, you re-sign Tyrese Maxey to five years, you sign Paul George, you sign Kelly Oubre back, you sign Caleb Martin. You signed Andre Drummond, a big, a really good backup big. You maintain Kyle Lowry, a good veteran point guard off the bench. Like, that's just crazy, man. Like, I, you guys had a crazy offseason. For all the Sixers fans out there, I think you guys are pretty happy with your squad. I have you guys making the third seed. I think your talent is going to really showcase how good the Sixers are. The team chemistry will be there, I think. Paul George is a nice fit. He's a two, one of the two best two-way players in the league. I have Philly at number three. I think they will be a really good team in the regular season. <clears throat> now, the playoffs, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I have them at third seed. At number four, I'm going to have the Milwaukee Bucks. <clears throat> I think the Bucks are still a really good team. Uh, I think health is one of the biggest concerns for the Bucks in age. Um, three of the, the top four guys are 33 and over. Dame, oh no, sorry, 32 and over. Dame, Giannis, oh no, Dame, Chris Middleton, and Brooke Lopez are all really old. Um, it's just, uh, they have good talent. The age is getting there though. Like you guys are like being pressured to win. You trade all your future. Yeah, yeah, I guess have to win now. But the Bucks are still really talented. Giannis is like one of the best power forwards in the entire league. One of the best players in the world. Giannis is gonna carry the squad to a fourth seed, in my opinion. Um, I think the their seeding could vary depending on Chris Middleton a lot. If Chris is healthier, I think they could be a top three seed. But if not, I could see them just sitting at four comfortably, which is still pretty good. Um, but yeah, I think the Bucks will be number four. Um, it also depends how badly Brook Lopez regresses because he is going to turn thirty six now. I think he's getting, he's getting to the age. Father time is coming, <laughs> Brook Lopez. It's coming. <clears throat> Pause. <clears throat> um, but. Yeah, number five, I'm going to have the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, Cleveland, <clears throat> I think they did a good job. 
maintaining mostly everybody. For as of now, they resigned Mitchell, Mobley. The only person that's gonna resign is Darius Garland. We don't know what's gonna happen with him. Is he gonna get traded? Is he gonna resign? Who knows? I think he's I think it's leaning more towards resigning, but who knows? But we will see these upcoming days, weeks, months, what he does. But the Cavs, truthfully, they could be a good team. They were pretty injury uh, prone in the playoffs. Jared Allen was injured like the entire second round against the Celtics. Mitchell had to miss a game. Moby had to miss a few games. It's kind of it looks kind of tough for them. I I could see the the Cavs being a good team. Now top four good, I don't think so. But the Cavs are still a really good team. They should be respected, and I have them number five. We'll see what, what happens with the Cavaliers this next, next year coming up. <clears throat> but at number six, I have my, my own Miami Heat. Now, Heat fans, stay with me. I know some Heat fans can be delusional at times, including myself. And they'll be like, oh, but the Heat are the top four team in the East. When it's the playoffs, right? in the regular season, we don't know how good they are. The Heat are, oh, they always like sit back in the regular season. They're like, oh, well. We'll wait for the playoffs to try. That's usually what the Heat do. The only year that that was an exception was 2022 when they were the first seed and they, they took it seriously. That was the year that the Heat who actually cared about the regular season. I think they should be like that again. I do think the Heat are still a really good team. They were pretty injured most of the year. If you guys don't know, Jimmy missed like 25 games. Tyler Hero missed like 20 games. Terry Rozier got a neck injury at the end of the year. And it's pretty bad. The only uh, person who was consistently like healthy was Bam. Bam had a really good year. The uh, All Star reserved for a reason. But if the Heat are healthier, I think I could see him being six seed instead of beat, falling the all the way to eighth. I think the Heat still have the talent. They just need to stay healthy and um, not <laughs> not rest in the regular season because we we saw what happened in the play-in. Uh, Jimmy's MCO got screwed over him. That was it for the Heat, pretty much. And number seven, I have. The Indiana Pacers. Now, I think the East got better. The Pacers didn't. Um, I think the Pacers are still going to be a really good regular season team, in my opinion. They play with a lot of pace. They play really quickly. That they they have a really high um, volume offense. They play fast. They score a lot. That's good in the regular season. In the playoffs, not not so much. And I think the East got better. Um, the Knicks got better. Philly got better. The Cavs are still still the same. Celtics are still the best team in the league. I think the Heat are better too, and the Bucks are still better. So I have the Pacers number seven. That could be a little bold, but I can't seem to be much higher than that. I would say maybe, maybe six, but that's about it for me. Um, they're still a good team. They're gonna be wrong. I think they just like a little more veteran experience in the playoffs. Um, more more defensive more defensive guys. Um, Obi Toppin's good, but you, you need more. Um, I don't know. It's just not there yet. Halliburton needs to take another another leap. I feel like next year for them to be good. The whole team all around's pretty good, but I think they need to prove more in the playoffs because they kind of just be two injury prone teams and then ran to the Celtics and boop, that's it. <laughs> they didn't win a single game against them. That's that was kind of sad to watch. <laughs> um, but at my last team making the Eastern Conference playoffs. I'm going to have the Orlando Magic making it number eight. Yes. Um, the East is pretty, 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 pretty ass um, compared to last year. You have more teams tanking now. Um, the Hawks traded Jadante. <laughs> the Bulls traded DeRozan. Man. The Raptors are just bad. The Wizards are just bad. That's the tanking. It's just like, who else could I pick? Like, the Magic are, don't get me wrong, they're a good team. And they had a KCP. That's a pretty solid squad. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything bad about the Magic. I'm just saying the rest of the East, there's no competition in the bottom half of the conference. There's no competition. Compared to the West, at least, there's no competition at all. I do not see another team making it to the eighth seed besides the Magic. Like, prove me wrong. Maybe maybe the Hawks, if they, no, it can't be the Hawks. They just traded Jante away. I, I can't see any other team making it. But, um, yeah, regardless of Magic, it's still really good. Paul, though, is going to develop more. I feel like Franz is going to develop more. You saw Wendell Carter, solid center. Fultz is going to leave, I think, uh, but he's in this picture because this is his last season. 
Uh, I think the addition of KCP is going to be huge. It's going to be really nice. I think they still lack a point guard. I think that's what the Magic lack. But the Magic is more of a team built on forwards and wings and stretch forwards. And, like, yeah, you know, that's more of the Magic's thing. They don't like point guards. <laughs> um... I think Jonathan Isaac, Jonathan Isaac could be solid next year. Uh, it depends on the injuries, of course. He is pretty injury prone. But I think the Magic got a squad. The Magic do got a squad. They, they could be a sleeper to win a few games in the, in the playoffs and maybe even even around if they make it far up in the standings. But um, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you for watching this little predictions I have for the eight teams in the Eastern Conference who are going to make it. Let me know down below if for some reason you think some other team's going to make it. Don't be delusional, please. But without much to more to say, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos in the future. Adios and goodbye.